everyone, Christian here, and I am here in the house. I'm not out doing a palm review, but I do want to talk about cold tolerance as we are getting into fall. Uh, you really wouldn't know it in Florida, except for there's an influx of more people coming down. Uh, with every month, more snowbirds come down, and then obviously during the holiday season, it, it really uh, it gets, it, there's a big influx of people in general, whether they're on vacation or just they can only come for a few months, but... Um, talking about cold tolerance in, in palms, you know, my, most of my knowledge is based out of, you know, Florida, which is humid subtropical slash tropical, depending on where you are. So some Southern parts of Florida are classified as a tropical climate, um, even though they do incur the occasional frost and or freeze because of their median. A tropical climate is, uh, defined as a climate that, uh, who, where, which average temperature, meaning the high and the low, is higher than 64 degrees Fahrenheit for all 12 months out of the year. And um, so if you are uh, in Florida, you will find that everywhere up to about the Sarasota area. Um, it's a little bit on the borderline there, but it's been warmer in recent years. So it's kind of gotten to about Sar the Sarasota area, especially on the coast. And if you go, if you go inland that medium temperature medium sorry i'm trying to block out this halo of light above my head <laughs> so you can see me a little bit better but the um the east coast you actually can get a little bit get away a little bit further north along the coast because of the gulf stream so i've seen coconuts growing there's a well-known coconut in saint augustine now it's definitely a, a rogue one of a kind that's in a very protected area so if you want to talk about a little more dependability I define a, a plant being cold hardy to a zone if it can be planted in that zone and without protection can grow and flower to maturity on its own without any help. So, uh, for example, uh, there's a needle palm, Rapidophyllum hystrix, growing in Washington, D.C. in the, their National Botanical Garden. It flowers and produces, uh, well, I don't know if there's a, there's, I think, I believe they're dioecious, so they're male and female, but... It, I would consider that palm to be cold hardy to that zone, which would be 7B, I think, on the, the where that, that actually is. The zones go real fast in the D.C. area because of the, the hills. But for coconuts to be hardy in Florida is a, is a hotly debated topic. So um, I've seen them growing places, but for them to be hardy, I would say probably going to be south of Cape Canaveral. There are some microclimates there, Merritt Island. Uh, is definitely one of them along the barrier islands as well. When you get further south into, say, Jupiter, uh, south into the Keys, obviously those are uh, definitely cold hardy there, the solid zone 10s. Um, on the west coast, it does not go as far up. We don't have the Gulf Stream here. So you're talking like Naples, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, uh, north up to about Sarasota now. Maybe that 15 years ago it might not have been that way, but um, with the increase in, uh, you know, global temperatures just by a little bit it actually allows for that to happen and you see coconuts planted quite a bit around the sarasota even bradenton area anywhere south of the skyway there by the water the the water still ameliorates the temperature by bringing warm air from the water which is relatively warmer to the land which is colder in the winter time so um as far as growing palms in pots now if you now let me say this if you go inland uh from either of these areas uh in the central unless you're south of the lake and near uh, i-75 the cold weather uh it, it gets a little too cold to say grow a coconut and sea bring in which is in the interior right there between like fort pierce and, and sarasota unless you are uh near a lake, which will help that uh, climate quite a bit. There's actually some pretty cool climate, microclimates in that area because of the large lakes that are there. And so uh, if we talk about cold tolerance, cold protection. Um, it, let's just, you know, using a coconut as our object of discussion. Um, you know, a coconut, I would say, is, is tolerant of all zone 10 temperatures, see, meaning you can go down to about 30 degrees and right about there, any period of time where it's going to sit at 30 degrees is going to be pretty uh, pretty detrimental to the palm. Now, it can take a, a quick dip down into the upper 20s if, as long as it comes back up during the day. So uh, this is why 
now if I, if it's going to sit at uh, below 60 for quite some time, that's where the palm basically has to go into safe mode and try and save itself from from death as it can't produce any carbohydrates or energy um, during those temperatures. So that's why you don't see palms growing in L.A. or San, I mean, Sorry, coconut palms growing in L.A. or San, San Diego. There's a few outlying palm coconuts that do grow there with some protection. But it just you, you get two, three, four weeks or more with highs in the upper 50s. And it may only get down to 40 as the lowest temperature, but it just it never gets warm enough for them. And then they need that, and they need that humidity as well. It does help out. So, um, your biggest now trying to protect your palms uh, that may be potted or in the ground is going to be probably the, the cold, dry winds that may come about, or even the cold, wet weather you might have in uh, the West Coast. So we'll talk about the cold, dry winds in Florida. So for about six weeks out of the year here, even on the Southwest Coast, we get some, we get these. We're vulnerable to these Arctic fronts. That come through and they bring uh, windy weather with temps in the uh, 30s and 40s and hey say hey Hi. hey <laughs> so trying to do this in a family setting and uh, so as people might be coming going but that's our bedroom there uh, so <clears throat> anyway the, for the six weeks we have you know we're vulnerable to these Arctic fronts that come through you get these windy days with highs in the mid to upper 60s and lows in the low to mid 40s. Uh, it's usually about as cold as it's been getting these days, or these years. And coconuts can handle that. That's not a problem. Uh, it, when we start getting down or start getting north into central Florida where there are frosts, where there are freezes, let's say you live in Lakeland or you say you live in North Tampa, uh, Gainesville, uh, Ocala, Jacksonville, Tallahassee, Pensacola, you name it, where you see a frost or a freeze every year. Um, now, with potted, there was, uh, protecting potted plants is a much greater task than planting, uh, protecting one in the ground because in the ground, the plant has, on all, on all sides of the roots, has uh, a buffer from the cold air because it's sitting in the ground. It's insulated. That's why you see houses up north uh, sometimes half a level will be underground to keep the, uh, the house insulated from the cold. So the same thing kind of goes for plants. Uh, if you have a, if you have a potted palm that's uh, sitting outside in those cold, dry winds, it'll, it'll dry up real fast. And, uh, the roots will also be, uh, penetrable to that, to those winds and, and the cold weather. And that will make it go downhill faster than say one that's been established in the ground, has a root system that is a healthy, a healthy root system. Uh, potted or otherwise is essential to a plant being able to go through a cold snap according to its cold hardiness. So you'll see some really healthy coconuts that do fine like in a, in a frost and you'll see some that kind of were just planted or some in some pots that will really get hit hard in a frost or like a little freeze like say like 30 degrees. And um, the what you can do as a collector uh, or enthusiast is to uh, Purchase a few items that would be best for uh, protecting these plants in those short periods. Because they're so short, if you can get through them, say in some of your Mediterranean subtropical climates, uh, the, the best thing to do is to get high quality frost cloth. Now you can get the cheap stuff and it's real thin. You can wrap it around a few times, that'll work. But the, the heavier stuff, I don't know the brands, but um, if you go to a big box store, they usually have two different types. Look for the one... If it's a few extra dollars for the, the nicer one, get the nicer one. It, it is worth it. Um, there are other little t methods you can do. Say you're trying to get a, a seedling up off the, you know, get, getting it going in your yard, and you you know a freeze might might harm it. Uh, and a frost or a freeze is incoming. The best thing, what I do, take a five-gallon bucket and just tip it over over the plant. Uh, the frost can't penetrate that, that, that plastic. So you can do that. Um... You can use a trash can if, for bigger plants. Uh, wrapping them up in the frost cloth is always good because when the you have two different types of freezes or, or frost, you have a radiational freeze and you have an advective freeze. So a radiational freeze is going to be when the hot or the relatively warmer air uh, in the evening will radiate out of the ground up into the air, and the cold the cold can then set in coming down, and those. Uh, 
can be much more easily protected. You can protect your palms more easily in those freezes than you can in an effective freeze because there's very little wind and you know where the frost is coming. And if you can put the frost cloth on top, you want to wrap it up real tight and make sure the top is covered so that no frost can get it on the top there. Kind of like with your head, you know, like I shave my head here and this gets really cold in the winter time. So wearing a hat is a great idea. So, uh, you know, this is very uh, frost sensitive. Um, so in an advective freeze, you're going dealing with more wind. The, the uh, amelioration of the Gulf water, the Atlantic Ocean water is going to be uh, minimal because the wind will keep the, uh, the, 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 what's it called? The, <laughs> keep the warmer uh, temperatures uh, kind of just flowing around. And you think, oh, well, it'll bring more warm weather to, uh, to, the, uh, you know, to the shore, but it really won't. What it does is it takes all the heat and it just blows it away. And you don't get that radiational frost, but you get that cold, dry wind that will can dry out a tropical plant overnight. And you may not even get a freeze, but you'll see your plant is brown in the morning. And the reason why is just because of transpiration of the leaves. And you don't want that to happen. Uh, you know, a few nights of protection, you know, spending the extra time is, is really worth it from my experience. I did try and get by with a, you know, with a few plants that I thought, I, you know, oh, well, they'll, they'll be okay. Uh, they weren't okay in the morning. They... They, they'll it'll set them back uh, at least a year if it gets defoliated. And uh, on some of these slower palms, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's a long time. And then you got to hope that there's no rot in the crown. You really want to protect that crown. Uh, the foliage can burn. The crown, if it gets, uh, you know, rot or fungus, and then you start having a plant that's, you know, might be on its deathbed. So uh, that's your, your kind of like what I call your hot, cold, uh, sort of tolerance to um, to frost. Now you also have what what I call the cool tolerance. And now there's some palms that uh, they can handle some some freezing weather for short periods, but they can't handle extended periods of cool weather. And so uh, g genera that are in this are like latanias, coconuts, um, prochardias, and uh, a couple more I can't think of offhand, but. Uh, I can list them down below if anyone has any questions about those cool, those non-cool tolerant plants, ones that really can't handle like say 40, 40 to 40 to 50 degree weather for like a, two or three weeks. Um, they'll really start going downhill. And uh, for example, Latanias, if their crown starts to kind of uh, stop growing, they start having fungal issues, palmetto bugs know exactly where they are and will get, will get at them immediately. Uh, really good cool, cool tolerant plants are often you can often be, find them in uh, California. For example, uh, Arconta Phoenix, the king palm, is great being cool tolerant. Royals are very cool tolerant. They can handle uh, long periods of 40 to 50 degree weather. Um, all the Phoenix uh, species can do that really well. Um, most subtropical plants can handle that cool weather. Just it's the tropical stuff. Uh, we're talking about uh, Penanga. Um, uh, Arica, Cliptrocalyx, um, what else? Yeah, like I said, the, the Latanias, the coconuts, uh, like the double coconut, if you happen to be so lucky as to find a viable seed. Um, you know, definitely protect that plant because there aren't many of them. And some of the people who have them, such as some of the botanical gardens, I don't want to name any offhand, Fairchild, but, uh, whoops, that slipped my, my, my mouth there, but uh, during the 2010, 2011 freezes, they didn't protect any of their double coconuts, and they lost most, most of them. And those seeds start at $500 a seed. That doesn't guarantee, even guarantee you a plant. So uh, a plant with like 10 feet to 15 foot leaves, I mean, the value, just the actual value of the plant has, is like $5,000 each. And just to let them sit there and die and say, oh, well, we'll, we'll replant. Well, we replant that one because there's only... A half dozen of them in Florida that size, maybe, and uh, it's just not, you know, why bother planting that palm if you know this is going to happen, and you don't do anything about it, and you're literally, uh, you know, you're you're wasting someone's effort and time that they took to to acquire this plant, the financial cost, and people people will pay a thousand dollars for a seed that they know is viable at a chance of growing a double coconut. It's a beautiful plant, and I'll try and do a vlog on one. There's only but so many here in Florida, and 
a couple of them are just not in the area that I tend to, to frequent. So, um, so yeah, we've gone over frost cloth, we've gone over uh, advective and radiational freezes, we've gone over certain palms that you know don't like the, their their cool tolerance is very low, and uh, so uh, plant accordingly to your climate. You know, if you're getting a lot of uh, there's some also some palms that don't like a lot of water in the winter time because of that cool weather, their their ability to like ward off uh, illness is is diminished. So some of these tropical plants will, won't handle cool wet weather very well, or cool dry. They just don't like cool weather, and that's understandable. They don't they don't uh, experience it at all where they come from. So uh, you know, try some things you can do to uh, help with the cool dry weather. Say in in Florida or subtropical areas of South America, Africa, or Asia. Is uh, try and spray your 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 palm leaves down with like some warm water, especially at night. That even just that extra temperature of, of the water is hanging around. Water has a high specific heat capacity, and so it can keep that temperature, the soil temperature up. It can keep the fronds uh, warmer. It can keep the frost from forming, and uh, that can really that can really help out. So uh, people even keep five gallon buckets of warm water nearby to keep the ambient air temperature. High, which is which is not a, it, it's it works sometimes. I don't know how well it works, but it's not a bad idea. And if you can if you can, you know, keep that if you could actually like create a structure where you kept the five gallon bucket of hot water, so the steam would come up and keep it in that little uh, structure. That'd be great. You could you know your palms would would do great through the cold snap. So, um, so I think that's you know that's there are certain palms also when a new spear is emerging the leaf is very tender and so if you're going through for example Likawalas and I think I mentioned this in a previous vlog if you have like for example a Likawala grandis and there's a frost or a freeze and uh, it's in the ground and or in a pot you can't move it inside for whatever reason it may be if there's a if there's a new leaf emerging that that new leaf matter is very tender that frond and uh, it will uh, brown off in a, in a frost so the best thing to do is to kind of make sure that crown is highly protected. It's it, the the trunk can handle the cold because the trunk has no live tissues. The the live tissues are all in the inside of the trunk. Those leaves, the emerging area, that is the most vulnerable part of the palm. So if you can just wrap up the just the top part, just the crown, um, you can keep that from happening. I saw that uh, a lot of Likwala Granis died in 2010 because of that. But the if the spear has not opened yet then usually they're okay. So I'd see like two Likawala Grandas here, uh, one with the spear merge with a brown front and one perfectly okay with just a spear coming out. So uh, that's one observation I've had over the years. So anyway, uh, without making this, you know, in half an hour vlog, um, you know, that's kind of like, let's just say, we'll call it part one of uh, cold tolerance and cold protection. And uh, I'll try and do some hands-on stuff. I have some soil here. I have a little bit of time I can work with uh you know showing you guys some things i had to i have another vlog that i'm doing about the picking up the stuff in my nursery that wasn't the best experience uh, i'll go into depth about that in another video so uh yeah i'll you know i hope this is informative i hope this is helpful to you guys um i'll try and do hands-on with a plant in front of me and it just i've just been really busy i've been you know i've been on the road way more than I've been in, uh, at home and uh, I've just been trying to give you guys some some content to watch that would be you know helpful informative interesting entertaining whatever it may be so hope you enjoyed this vlog if you did uh, give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions about cold protection or cold tolerance you know leave it down below and uh, if you're new to the channel go ahead and subscribe and uh, I will put, put it informative and interesting vlogs to best the best of my ability in the future and uh, thank you for watching